It went to the Russ Hinn's own Lady Nijinsky. Came from a wide barrier, just off the speed all the way. Nice ride by Miles Plum to defeat the consistent Rickety Kate and star of the night had no luck. Rickety Kate going very fast with Lady Nijinsky in the early stages and Plush Lady showing a lot of dash as well, going up to run to the lead now. And it's Plush Lady going to the front to lead Rickety Kate by a length. A length away third, Lady Nijinsky followed by Colney Cathy. And then Champagne Kate, Grand Year running about sixth on the inside, followed by Sovereign Chick and then Stolen Song. Venetian Valley after a slow start going right around the field. She's going up fast, Puff midfield, a length and a half to Princess Teresina. Further back came Whistle Stop and then Gay Gola, star of the night's a long way back with Confidentially and Romano's girls four lengths last. As they run down the side, 6.50 to go, Plush Lady a length and a half in front of Rickety Kate and Lady Nijinsky. Venetian Valley now a half length away, fourth, followed by Grand Year, Champagne Kate, Call Me Kathy, Sovereign Chick, then Puff, followed by Stolen Song, Princess Teresina's now starting a run with Whistle Stop, star of the night. Further back, Gay Gola and then Confidentially and Romano girl. On the bend, 400 metres to go, Rickety Kate loomed up quickly to hit the lead from Plush Lady. On the outside, Lady Nijinsky battling on well. Grand Year's looking for a run, then Sovereign Chick, Champagne Kate right down the outside, then Stolen Song and Star of the Night, 200 metres to go. Lady Nijinsky's hit the lead on the outside, Lady Nijinsky just in front of Rickety Kate, then Plush Lady, Star of the Night making up ground, but it's Lady Nijinsky in front, drawing to the line, and Lady Nijinsky's too good for them, wins it by a length. Rickety Kate second, Star of the Night third, followed in by Grand Year, then Plush Lady... Good run there from Star of the Night to get third, and she might be coming back to her best now. The Croxley Stud Novice was next, and Montpellier Prince back in the winning list, always in the uh, firing line, went to the line strongly. Defeat Jerry Mander, whose run was good. He set up a big lead in the middle part and battled on well. The favourite Mumbo Jumbo again, an expensive failure. A lot of early speed. Mumbo Jumbo began nicely third on settling down. Sweet Lorenz is going through into a prominent spot, and two, so too is Smoky Tiger. Funny place about midfield on the outside of Airbound. Getting back now, Grey Meteor with greater grace and Lucas John last. On settling down, it's a great battle for the early lead. Moving up fast on the outside and running to the front now as Jerry Mander goes to the lead from Isle of Bisco. Sweet Lorenzo neck away third on the rails. Followed by Montpellier Prince and then Mumbo Jumbo. Smoky Tiger next on the outside, then wave me goodbye, funny place. Oriental Express picking up ground on the outside. He's starting a run now. Further back came airbound on the inside. A break of a couple of lengths to Rosemount Report. Greater Grace and then Grey Meteor. And down at the rear of the field, Lucas John. As they come down the side with about 600 metres left to go. And Jerry Manders race right away from them. Three lengths in front of Montpellier Prince. Then Isle of Biscay. Mumbo Jumbo now starting a run. Then Smoky Tiger on the outside. Sweet Lorenz. Further back wave me goodbye. And then funny place into it with a fair run. And further back, Rosemount Report and Oriental Express in the straight. Jerry Manders the leader. Still clear. Two lengths in front. Montpellier Prince in second place under the whip, then Isle of Biscay. Mumbo Jumbo wave me goodbye, trying hard on the outside. The leader stopping now. Jerry Manda just in front. Montpellier Prince going to him pretty quickly on the outside. Montpellier Prince loomed up to take the lead from Jerry Manda, then Mumbo Jumbo and wave me goodbye. But Montpellier Prince in front as they hit the line. And Montpellier Prince won it by almost a length to Jerry Manda and Mumbo Jumbo. Then wave me goodbye, Orion. Uh, it gave Miles Plum a winning double in great form, young Miles at the moment. The Waddle Bray stud handicap on the outside has continued when Reckon I'm Ready scored his first win since December 1980 when he scored a 20 to 1 from Homet, beautifully ridden by Neil Williams. Looked the winner in the straight, but Reckon oh, I'm Ready just a little too strong over the final 100 metres. Daring Dancer and Jickery out wide began quickly. Northern Beam and Sweet Jamaica got away well. Gala Mascot and Dream Silver drifting back shortly after the start, and so too Reckon I'm Ready and Bidston Hill about midfield. Running up to the winning post the first time, and Jickery has taken the lead. Homard running second. Double rule trapped off the track. Keep safe going through in the centre. Then Bidston Hill, who's improving his position quickly with Garda Mascot. Dream Silver a little wide. Northern Beam over on the inside. A length further back to Rakes Pride. Then our George Daring Dancer. Sweet Jamaica back second last at Reckon I'm Ready at the rear. Running to the side now. Double rule has taken over. Double rule heading up to the 1400. Leads by a length and a half on Homard. Jickery now third on the inside. Garda Mascot a bit deep, but going up towards the leaders. Followed then by Keep Safe Dream Silver. Silver. A length further back to Bidston Hill, Northern Beam on the inside of our George, and there's Reckon I'm Ready taking off quickly, but he's trapped four deep as they run along the back. Rakes Pride getting well back in the field with Daring Dancer and Sweet Jamaica now last. Up towards the thousand now and the leader double rule. There's no speed on. Gutter Mascot settling well in second place. A length behind the leader. Followed by Dream Silver going up but a bit wide. Reckon I'm Ready still deep on the track. And then Homard keeps safe. Jickery followed by Bidston Hill and then our George on the outside. Northern Beam ridden along a little bit at this stage. Daring Dancer picking up ground on the outside of Rakes Pride and Sweet
Speed Jamaica now last. Onto the bend at the 800 and Reckon I'm Ready continuing with that run on the outside. Loomed up to go to the lead from Double Rule and leads by a length. Gardamas got a neck away third the outside. Then Dream Silver followed by Homer. Then Keep Safe out. George the outside. Jiggery back on the rise. Then Bidston Hill. There's Rach Pride starting a run. He's going up on the outside of Northern Beam and down at the rear of the field. Sweet Jamaica as they come towards the home turn. They're really packing up now. And as Reckon I'm Ready a half length in front of Gardamas got Homer third. Right around the field. Daring Dancer with a big run. Dream Silver's still there. Bidston Hill's right off the track. And then our George Double Rule on the rails behind them. And then Northern Beam and Race Pride in the straight. 250 metres left to go. Reckon I'm Ready taken on now by Homer on the outside. In the centre, Garda Mascot. Then Jickery, Daring Dancer. Race Pride down the outside with Bidston Hill. They've got 100 metres to go. Homer's just in front. Reckon I'm Ready's kicking again on the inside. They're going to fight it out. Reckon I'm Ready just in front of Homer. They're drawing to the line. Reckon I'm Ready just in front. And he's won it. Reckon I'm Ready has just beaten Homer. Jickery probably third. Then Rakes Pride. The bookies could scarcely believe their luck when Reckon I'm Ready scored, but it was more of the same when Own Prince won the last at 25 to 1. Aquitaine, the favourite, looked certain to score at the 200 metres where she was really motoring, but she just uh, petered a little bit on her run the last bit. began nicely, and so did Diamond Heather. Silver Hastings began well, and Grand Dutch going fast with Stylish Knight in search of the early lead. Aquitaine began nicely running about six as they come up to the post the first time. Our statesman caught a little bit wide. Glory Bay getting back with Hasty Harry Own Prince and Polar Mola last. Running to the first bend as they go to the 1600 and Runda Koo has taken the lead. Diamond Heather second, Stylish Knight third. Then Silver Hastings on the inside of Cobb and Co. Followed by Aquitaine who's caught a little bit wide at the moment. Racing on the outside of Grand Dutch and Sprite Light. Own Statesman is out wide on the track as well so he's moving up a little bit closer. Followed by Mayor Star on the inside of Star Brigand. Then Glory Bay, Hasty Harry Own Prince and Polar Mola last. On the bend at the 1400 and it's run to Koo showing the way and he skipped away from them on that corner to lead by three lengths on Stylish Knight and Diamond Heather. Over on the inside, Silver Hastings. The boy looks as though he's in a little bit of trouble on Silver Hastings. The saddle may have slipped. Cobb and Co. fifth on the outside, followed by our statesman. And then Grand Dutch, back along the row, Sprite Light. Then Aquitaine, Mayo Star, Star Brigand, Hasty Harry, Glory Bay, Polar Mola, Own Prince still at the rear. 8.50 metres left to go on the leader here. It's uh, Run to Coup steadied in front now to lead by a length. Silver Hastings moving up on the outside. Yes, I think that saddle has slipped, so he's got no option but to let him run along a little bit. Stylish Knights a length away third, followed by Cobb and Co. moving up on the outside of Diamond Heather. Then Grand Dutch followed further back by our statesman. Polar Mola's making a quick dash around the field. Midfield on the row, Sprite Light, then Glory Bay. Our statesman lost ground there. He dropped back sharply. Aquitaine now working into the clear, starting a run, and then own Prince Mayo Star. Further back, Star again and Hasty Harry. Our statesman's dropped right out of it and he's last as they come on towards the home turn. 4.50 metres left to go. Run to Coup just in front of Silver Hastings. Cobb and Co in a quick burst loomed up three deep on the outside to tackle the leaders. Own Prince is going up four deep. Glory Bay to the extreme outside. Then Hasty Harry. Mayo Star on the rails looking for the way clear. Then Diamond Heather and Aquitaine down the outside. Own Prince slipped to the front. 200 metres to go. A length clear. Aquitaine on the outside running on gamely. Then Cobb and Co. Glory Bay and Mayo Star. It's Own Prince in front holding Aquitaine close to the line yes he's too good for them and Own Prince is going to win it by a length and a half Own Prince first second Aquitaine Hasty Harry or Mayo Star and a photo for third thanks that was the end of the, the punter's nightmare the last race the book is winning he's got a sparrow in the studio probably lost yesterday too uh, we've got the TAB information now on Doombin the double and treble firstly the double 10 and 5 paid $622.15 the treble 12, 10 and 5 paid $20,198.25 and the extra double from Doombin, 14 and 3, Wee Dram and Montpellier Prince paid $129.90. Racing in the Grand Prix. <laughs> Brisbane Winter Racing Carnival, unfortunately badly marred by rain. That aside, the highlight was the success of the new... The Kiwis have made a success of coming to Australia and landing our big cups. Their stay has continued that trend this... Avett landing the Prime Minister's Cup and Claymore Boy rounding it off with the Ipswich Forex Cup. But it was the sprinter Bren Lane who was the star here on Elders Handicap Day. Beautifully ridden by a dynamic Brisbane jockey Gavin Duffy, he stormed home to defeat the New South Wales sprinters Manuan and Nosy Parker. Out of the home turn, 450 metres left to go. Fix Flash brings him around the corner. He's a half length in front of 10. Later in the Victorian stayer Amaranth followed up his Adelaide Cup success and his third in the Brisbane Cup 
the year earlier when he was beautifully ridden by Peter Cook to land the Brisbane Cup and become one of the favourites for this year's Melbourne Cup. Jip on the outside starting a big run. There's a fall. There's two down as they come onto the home turn. Two of them came down around the bend now. 400 metres left to go. Lance Lotto's the leader. A half length in front. Forward charge after him quickly on the outside. Noble Heights has now popped the big question. Amaranth's getting a run in the centre. Bound to honour on the extreme outside with Rose and Thistle. Forward charge has taken the lead. 200 to go. But here's the favourite. Amaranth's loomed up to go to the lead on the outside. And Amaranth is spearing away from them over the concluding stages. He's going to win it brilliantly. By three, lengths three excellent down days of racing at the Eagle Farm Brisbane Cup meeting was highlighted by a record number of visiting horses, massive gambling with the first ever $1 million tote hold at, on Elders Handicap Day, and the Vice Chairman of the Queensland Turf Club, Mr Peter Gallagher, was naturally delighted with the overall results. Yes, we were, but uh, $2.7 million for the three days is uh, something to be very pleased with, and uh, included in that, of course, was the one million dollars plus on uh, Elders Day, the first time this has happened in Queensland racing. You had a total turnover with the tote and the bookies in excess of uh, nine million dollars. Approximately nine point six million dollars and uh, that is uh, in spite of uh, the bad weather on uh, Westfield Cup Day which wasn't very conducive to betting. People don't like betting on, uh, on bog tracks. You also must have been pleased with the number of visiting horses here this year. Yes, the statistics were quite amazing on uh, the three days, Westfield Cup, uh, Elders and Brisbane Cup Day, 45% of the acceptors were visiting horses and uh, we had a total of 190 visiting horses except for those three days. Obviously the main attraction is the prize money and uh, Eagle Farm boasted excellent prize money this year for the three big days. Well yes, the prize money uh, and the weather, although that wasn't <laughs> the case this year, but uh, that's proved the case in the past when horses they, they do well here and they'll do well here this year and I think the proof of the pudding will be uh, how they perform when they uh, go back to their home states for the uh, spring carnivals. One of the suggestions for the 1984 carnival is a, a three-year-old triple crown here at Eagle Farm in May and June. Yes, the committee has decided to run a triple crown. They've transferred the guineas from October and, uh, to May and we'll run the, uh, the guineas, the Grand Prix and the Derby. And, uh, a subcommittee has been formed and it will take proposals to the committee to substantially to increase the prize money for those races as well as providing a, uh, a bonus for the Triple Crown winner. Around the corner now and it's Strawberry Road by about three quarters of a length on Kiyomare. A length of Veloso pop the question and about three or four then to Mr Maginti. On top of the rise in the Queensland of Strawberry Road. He's a length and a half Veloso and two and a half to Kiyomare. But Strawberry Road he's going great guns. Queensland has expected no big things of Strawberry Road this winter following his dynamic Sydney Autumn Carnival after devastating wins in the Rose Hill Guineas and the AJC Derby. Strawberry Road was sent out a long odds on favourite in the 4X stakes here at uh, Eagle Farm. He was surprisingly beaten, not uh, particularly disappointing, although I suppose punters who laid the odds on weren't too uh, wrapped in the performance, but he bounced back the following week and the real Strawberry Road stood up in the Channel 7 stakes. He blitzed the opposition that day. Mick Dittman never had him at full pressure at any stage, and it was a fantastic performance. Dittman let Strawberry go. He's raced away from them. Strawberry Road, he's about three lengths in front of Homemade. Then Haley's Hope, but he's back on top today. He's killing them. Strawberry Road, he's racing right away in the run to the line. Like all trainers this winter, Doug Bedore had his share of worries with rain and wet training tracks, and at the last minute he had to switch Strawberry Road from a middle distance campaign back to a sprint against the older horses in the Bernard Power Stakes at Doombit on May 30 and Doug thought this was probably the champ's best performance of the winter. I think so, Bart. He beat a good, strong field of flying horses, and he beat him so well. And you had to bring him back at the last minute to sprint uh, distance, too. Yeah, well, that much makes his effort much better, Bart, yeah. 400 metres left to go. Bren Lane off the rails, loomed up quickly to go to the lead. Strawberry Road right after him quickly on the outside, then Glenside Stellina, followed by Grand Rocky, and then Sayo Boys at 250 out, and he's let go on Strawberry, and Strawberry's raced away from them. He's two lengths in front. Grand Rocky moving up to second, then Bren Lane, but he is a super cold Strawberry Road. Strawberry Road robbing to the line, wins it easily. And Darby struggled a little bit. Did you feel he trained off then? Oh, well, he'd had enough, Bart. I knew that four races he, he, he'd be struggling to win. Fly out. He flies out Monday night on the 15th of August. And his first run down there? Saturday. Caulfield Melbourne Cup double uh, for the second leg, the Melbourne Cup. And the bad weather which had plagued the winter carnival finally uh, returned to blue skies and we faced up to a, a better surface for the Rothmans 100,000. My Axman, a major disappointment in the Elders handicap when favourite. 
was uh, improving in his track work and part owner and trainer Kevin Griffin was looking forward to a much better showing in the Rothmans. 2.50 to go and the bowlers race to the lead. Lord Sambo, he's a length and a half clear. Bren Lane with a big run on the outside and here's my Axman winding up. Look at him come, my Axman. He's flying down the outside. He's limbed up to take the lead and my Axman's racing away from Bren Lane and Lord Sambo and my Axman goes on to win. Much of the discussion goes, leading up to the 4X Cup a week later centred on whether my Axman could complete the Burnborough double, the Rothmans and the cup. He didn't do it, but he went within an ace, leading until the final 50 metres when the local lightweight Lord Seaman just wore him down with the big advantage at the weights. Lord Seaman was just too strong, but my Axman won the plaudits of the crowd. My Axman in front, 3.50 to go, have it on the outside after this leader. Right down the extreme outside, here's Lord Seaman, then Gelsamino, followed by Rose and Thistle and Claymore Boy. My Axman in front, Lord Seaman trying hard to get to him, and then Abbott and Rose and Thistle. My Axman in front, he's fighting, Lord Seaman's coming at him on the outside. My Axman and Lord Seaman, Lord Seaman the outside, grab the lead right on the line, he's just got up, Lord Seaman. The man Seaman, who's had to shoulder much Axman of the there. worries of the wet weather at uh, Doombin in recent months has been the chairman of the Brisbane Amateur Turf Club, Judge Edmund Broad. Well, but uh, it's been much more than the winter carnival that was wet. Indeed, for the last 18 months, virtually, it's been raining here at Doom, and we've had uh, 69 race meetings in that time. Nine were completely abandoned. Twelve, it rained throughout the race meetings, and 35 were rain-affected to a significant extent. You certainly have had your share of wet weather. It was a pity the Winter Carnival got off at the, on the wrong footing with the uh, cancellation of your Labor Day weekend. Yes, we lost both those. It was unfortunate for our new sponsor, Bernard Power Hotels. However, eventually we got one of his uh, sponsorships on. It was unfortunate too for uh, the Stefan Sprint. We had to abandon that. But Steve Ackery very generously uh, agreed to continue the sponsorship into the following week on a weekday. And as you know, uh, financially, that's not uh, a very favourable thing to do. It was very generous of him, and uh, that was abandoned too because of rain. It, uh, when we did get down to racing, it was a very successful uh, two-day meeting, the Rothmans and the 4X Cup. You're satisfied with the results? Oh, very much so. Uh, the results were very good uh, as far as we, was, we were concerned, and I think for racing too. But we did lose one in the middle of it. That's right, you lost that midweek <laughs> meeting, the Queensland yes. Newspapers meeting. Yes, but uh, it was a great test for the new grandstand. Uh, uh, we believe that we've given the public what they need uh, uh, in facilities uh, and we think that uh, if we have average luck in the coming year, things are going to be great here at Dingham. Mr Hins, we had problems with the rain during the winter carnival, but overall were you happy with the way things went? Well, uh, I threw with the increases in turnover, uh, and but uh, the main feature of the whole of the carnival was the uh, determination. Land racing and in particular the winter carnival into national prominence and owners and trainers. I think the New Zealand owners and... Well, out of the rain, murk and gloom of recent months emerged a very good racing carnival and I'm sure in 1984 it's going to be bigger and better than ever. That's all the uh, Brisbane racing... Not too badly, probably about a slow track but it quickly deteriorated and you'll notice the riders as the meeting progresses head for the outside and it seemed to be a big advantage for horses racing out near the outside fence. The first was the divide and ruled handicap. The favourite back is off to a good start here with all chance. Well ridden by Craig Hieronymus getting the money. French and flighty. Second last is Hot Trist and three lengths to Flashman's Pride. Travelling onto the corner now. Vain Carrioy just in front. Here's the favourite old chant looming up three deep. Market report between them but on straightening now and coming to the 220 at old chant dashed away. Old chant two and a half mirror success racing to second. Followed by safe courier a gap no scolding. Market report dropping out of it from Star of Malaysia. But old chant at the hundred metres in no danger. Old chant about four clear on mirror success and then safe courier and Star of Malaysia but down to the line it's an easy one for the favourite All Chance All Chant over Mirrors Very promising rider Craig Hieronymus scoring there on All Chant The second was the Tails Handicap and Royal Blessing comes with a powerful finish to defeat uh, Whiskey Jack who led uh, in the straight All trouble at the back of the field guys and Dolls has broken down hopelessly he went back and has broken down very very badly indeed they straighten up now and Whiskey Jack shows the way from Colorado Prince Caliph Misty Hazar and wider is Cobbler's Fear at the 100 and 50 and Whiskey Jack is still in front the Chargers are coming after him with Royal Blessing emerging now and Royal Blessing shot past Whiskey Jack ducked in badly, straightened up by Burrows and is coming away Royal Blessing Royal Blessing three quarters of a length Whiskey Jack, third home was The third was the Glasgow Welter and Il Dufus coming from last, circles the field just approaching the home turn and comes away to a very good win and gives Paul Sutherland the Rose Hill trainer a winning double
just coming to the bend at the 450, where Prince Granada's now joined in front by Holden Court. Uncle Nugget wide out, Chief Justice battling on well. A length and a half to Pagma Mahal and Eljufus right down the other. Straightening up now, Chief Justice grabbed by Eljufus with Holden Court sticking on and then Pagma Mahal, Uncle Nugget and nothing else a chance, but it's Eljufus. Eljufus coming past the 100, nicely clear of Holden Court, Chief Justice and Pagma Mahal and Eljufus untroubled in the rundown of the line. It's Eljufus. There's been tremendous interest in the battle between Tommy Smith and Neville Begg for Premiership training honours in Sydney. Begg made it uh, only one win between the two, Smith clinging to just that single win lead after My Good Son scores from the Alchemist who flashes home for second. 350 to Gallup, star of Kingston and Biscoville, stride for stride. Paradise has got plenty of room to come through, followed by Wild Rush. My Good Son on the outside and they're clear of Dream in vain. In the stretch at the 200 metre, star of Kingston taken on by My Good Son. It's Begg and Smith horses battling it out two lengths the alchemist but my good son from the big stable is dashed to the lead the alchemist rocketing home all too late and big goes within one of smith now on the trainers premiership with my good son beating the alchemist. noticed my good son finishing towards the outside there well in the next event the mosaic handicap secret romance scouts right out wide to get the money here from colors Three deep to third, wider charming cavalier and even deeper secret romance and a length of colours. Around the corner they come and the leader narrowly regal carrioi Benjamino under the whip and wide out secret romance charging to them to hit the lead and went into the home section at secret romance a half length on charming cavalier battling on well. A length of colours followed then by Scorpio but it's secret romance way out amongst the people almost but secret romance about four on colours and charming cavalier and that's the way they'll finish. The grey Silver Marmion was one of the few leaders to win yesterday under hard riding from Neville Voigt. Silver Marmion manages to hold off Steeler Babe, who actually almost got to the lead about 100 metres out. Marmion in front by a length and a quarter, Steeler Babe. In third position is Arctic Performer, a length the Butterfly Prince, and then Waco Kid, and a couple count Joe Shan, and then comes Ripper Clipper straightening up. And Silver Marmion, the leader from Steeler Babe. Arctic Performer, third, two Butterfly Prince struggling, and so too Waco Kid. It's Steeler Babe after Silver Marmion. Arctic performer trying to reach them on the outside. Silver Marmy on the inside. Steeler Babe. Silver Marmy on just in front. Going home better the grey and Silver Marmy on a short neck. Well, that was a good finish and race seven the electro handicap provided another thrilling finish with Happy Halloween at 50 to one. Another one round the outside the scoring from Taron Boy and Lord third. Paddington. Within the law hugging the fence fourth and then as time goes by set him up Joe. Blazing Prince has made up ground from JT, Lord Paddington, Taron Boy and then Stilliard. They're all across the track straightening up with Step in style in front. Lord Paddington coming up on his inside. Taron Boy charging down the centre and then comes JT and Happy Halloween. Inside the 200 Taron Boy and Lord Paddington just in front from Happy Halloween and JT out under the crowd it's Happy Halloween coming after Taron Boy and Lord Paddington as they go to the line oh it's very very close we've got Happy Halloween finishing on the outside a typically cold Peter Cookride gave Rusklow success in the final event the talisman handicap Rusklow confidently back to start four to one defeats Lightning Bell Tapu dropping off from close company and absolute as they swing is M. Lubin at the 400 and past it again. A lot of these jockeys heading right to the outside, particularly Langbion Julius and also Lightning Bells Rider. Closer in, it's Figaro and Rusklow. Now Rusklow's taken up the running at the 150. Rusklow, the leader from Lightning Bell down the outside, Figaro, and battling on is Julius, but it's Rusklow and the all pink colours of the club holding Lightning Bell, and Rusklow cooks it's as quiet as a chair. Now the double and treble information from Warwick Farm. Firstly, the double eight and nine paid one hundred and forty-one dollars ten, and in a day of big dividends, the treble two eight and nine paid fourteen hundred and forty-three dollars. As on Diwali had to be pulled up in the middle stages, and have a look just as they're coming to the home turn, you'll see a dog race across the track. A car is lad starting to run on well, and the Gleemar lost its rider, and the Greyhound uh, dashed onto the track, but it's got across and no damage done. Around the turn, Sink for Supper took a narrow lead from Cathcart. They're followed by Layby. Here comes Midnight Glimmer with a good run from Akara's lad at the second last. Sink for Supper just led over it from Cathcart. Midnight Glimmer running on well and then Layby over the last. Sink for Supper the leader. Midnight Glimmer a length behind and they're followed by Cathcart. Midnight Glimmer's going better than Sink for Supper. Coming onto the course proper and Midnight Glimmer has raced to the lead from Sink for Supper. Then Cathcart, Akara's lad, Layby and Sartorial Blue. But Midnight Glimmer's coming right away and will win by about half a dozen lengths. A great go for the miners. Karina Mist has come from the clouds to get up and run second. 
the punters had trouble handling the heavy conditions at Sandown and the Gary Willett's ridden Racine scores at 16 to 1 in the first turf club handicap. Hooked across the leader's heels at the 200 metres and scores nicely. Dunwoody's under the whip at the head of the others as Miss Burrowee went to the lead and they were followed further back suitably vague and Mosley Durr. Miss Burrowee in front 200 to go now a length of Racine out after it followed by Divine Favour and Dunwoody but Miss Burrowee hanging onto the lead. Racine is now coming at it quickly the outside. Racine doing a bit better. Drew to Miss Burrowee put its head in front. Miss Burrowee fighting back but Racine is too strong and Racine goes on to win by about a length of uh, Miss Burrowee the inside. The Newminster handicap was the third and star of Riviera, 10 to 1 chance. Looked long odds about 100 metres out, but comes away to score well with a flying finish. By all prints coming into the picture next with Fords Bay. Around the turn they race, Mr Brutus out wide, joined by Jungle Habit, and then in the centre, Panucci under the whip. They're about three lengths in front. The others are going to work, have to work to catch them. A crew is fourth, then Champion Show, and they were followed by Bolito and Fords Bay. But with 200 to go and Jungle Habit, the leader from Mr Brutus, they've got it between them with Star of Riviera running on well. Jungle Habit, the leader with 100 to go from Mr Brutus. Star of Riviera absolutely flying, might get them. Star of Riviera coming home, 10 to their one, and it'll win. Star of Riviera's got up to win a long head, a great run. Yes, it was a good run, that Star of Riviera. The fourth, the second turf club handicap, and the solidly backed scenic walk scores well from Lady Rivette and Countess Kalina. And so is Ellen Dallas along the inside, and then Countess Kalina from Brave New World. Lady Rivette in front of the 300. He's sitting quietly, a length of scenic walk, followed then by Guyana, and back behind them, Ellen Dallas. It's still Lady Rivette at the 200, only a half length of scenic walk is getting to it quickly now. They're followed by Guyana, Countess Kalina, and Robinette, but scenic walk sprinting away in the last hundred, and scenic walks coming away to win it well, about a length and a half to Lady Rivette. Good go for third. Countess Kalina, I think, just got third from Guyana. The leader, Heavenly Time, holds on in a titanic struggle at the finish of the Cambrook Handicap. Four across the track with only about a neck between them. Royal Crest, Papal Bull's not going well. Heavenly Time, the leader into the straight, kicked away a length and a half at Char, a length, Mickel Micah and New Crop pulled to the outside, three lengths to Royal Crest. At the 200, Heavenly Time clear at Char, now out after it on the outside, coming strongly, and next is New Crop. Heavenly Time almost joined by at Char at the 200 from New Crop, and Royal Crest is starting to fly. It's Heavenly Time just in front of at Char, New Crop, and Royal Crest, and rocks in. There's three or four of them in line. Heavenly Time just in front on the inside. And Heavenly Times just won it. Royal Crest, the dead heater for third, might be one to follow there. The next was the Lily Moore handicap, and Mr. Nay backed in from 10 to 1 to 7 to 1, Easy responds to desperate riding Frank from Brian Andrews, Andrews to get the money. Pulled out from Iron Glove, then Tarango Boy, two lengths away, followed further back in the field, then by Whiplash. At the 300, Glenn Morrison got to the lead. Mr. Nayeb came at it quickly now from Bear Fist. Gold Fiori's under the whip from Tarango Boy. Mr. Nayeb getting the upper hand from Glenn Morrison at the 200. Golden Bounty starting to fly from Tarango Boy, but Mr. Nayeb drew clear with a hundred to go he's stopping but he's a length in front Gold Fiore getting up on the inside Mr Nayeb in front near the line and will win Mr Nayeb about a half length to Golden Fiore the Glen Waverley handicap was the seventh and Caramel Eyes went to the lead about 150 metres out and battles on to beat uh, Whiskey Lover and Marsh and Son produce a good finish for third. As they enter the straight now, Royal Sea, the leader, a length and a half, lays choice. On the outside making a run is Stan Ross and Caramel Eyes coming to the picture now and they were followed by our Dreamland who's weakening at the 250, Royal Sea under the whip and lays choice but Caramel Eyes quickly ranged alongside them to take the lead. They were followed then uh, making a run down the outside again, Whiskey Lover. Caramel Eyes got clear with 150 to go. Whiskey Lover trying to peg it back, but Caramel Eyes going strongly. And Caramel Eyes is going on to win comfortably. About a length and a half. Whiskey Lover might just last for second. The former Queenslander, Timelight, was sensationally back to start. Two to one favourite in the final event, the Welter, but he was an abject failure. The race going to the 25 to one chance, Chide, who gets up on the inside in the final 200 metres. And they were followed further back, Centricity in the straight. It's Belsia Boy just in front of Nordic Chief, who looks to be going better. Here comes Chide with a good run along the inside. Benlock pulled out wide on the track from Safraz. And further back in the field, inside straight. It's Nordic Chief grabbed now by Chide, who's got up on the fence to take the lead with Belsia Boy fighting back. Safraz coming at them. Benlock can't go on, but Chide got to the lead near the line. And Chide's going on to win the last on the program. Chide first. Safraz has run second. Now the eight events from Sandown yesterday, now the double and treble information. Firstly, the double, two and two, paid $30.80, and the treble there, three, two and two, paid $142.20.
easier, but he, congratulations to uh, winning trainer Bruce McLaughlin and also apprentice Shane Scriven, who took out the apprentice's honours for the season. It was a heavy track at Eagle Farm yesterday, and uh, unfairly so, I feel, because it was a, uh, an uneven surface. The outside horses were, were favoured. Speed shortly after the start. Love of Magic began well, but she dropped back very quickly shortly after the start. There's Lee called and Show a Lot going up fast to vie for the lead. Felinity began very quickly and is going up, but trapped about four horses deep. Snow Bloom about four lengths off the lead. On settling down as they run onto the first bend. Show a Lot shot to the front now by a length and a half on Simi Soon. Le called now running up at a second place on the outside of Simi Soon, then Shamrock. Miss Felinity Snow Bloom in Communicado, followed by Silver Dame Lamona now starting a run on the outside. Further back, Mid Rillo, and then Miller Leader on the outside. Back second last prospect, Miss and Love of Magic last as they go over the crossing at the 600. And the leaders show a lot of half length in front. See me soon off the rails as after this leader pretty quickly. Lee called three deep, four deep Felinity. Snow Bloom's right off the track, six and seven wide as they come around the corner, but coming into it with a strong run. 300 metres left to go. Show a lot, still the leader. Show a lot, a length and a half in front. See me soon battling on fairly well. Then Felinity Lee called in communicants as they come down past the 200 metre mark and a show a lot just in front of See Me Soon coming home game on the outside. Then Felinity followed by Lee called and Silver Dame. Snow Bloom on the extreme outside. See Me Soon loomed up to go to the lead close to home and she's starting to get away from them now. And See Me Soon goes on to win it by a length. Show a lot second. Tight for third. Silver Dame, Snow Bloom and Felinity followed by Prospect you might have noticed uh, just a, a glimpse of the favourite snow gloom there, raced most ungenerously in the straight and headed straight to the outside fence. That in fact was the best racing surface yesterday, it was a rather unfair surface, the inside horses were disadvantaged, but uh, snow bloom was going so awkwardly that uh, she just had no winning hope whatsoever, and don't discard her when she goes back to Melbourne the reverse way of going. The second event was the second Cinderella Stakes, and this was a very good training performance by Cobb Skinner to produce Afro Lady first start in the race, and a very tidy performance this. Afro Lady began brilliantly, oops, came out quickly and engaged showing speed from uh, out wide, going up running to the lead. My Mermaid and Mount Spec both began Again, quickly, Imperial Flyer, Madge Wildfire showing speed, watching, getting back with Midnight Toss, Pilton Pride, and Water Park and Chance Lee dropped to the rear, running onto the first bend with about 8.50 metres left to go. Engaged the leader almost to in front of Mount Speck, looming up on the outside of My Mermaid, Afro Lady is fourth, over on the inside of Whoops, and then Madge Wildfire, a break of three lengths to Imperial Flyer, then watching, who's hard ridden at the moment, Pilton Pride, Midnight Toss, Water Park now starting a run, and Chance Lee last, past the 600 as they run towards the corner, engage almost two in front, Mount Speck second on the outside, third on the rails My Mermaid, followed by Afro Lady, Madge Wildfire, then Orps watching, now starting around and Afro Lady wins it by almost a length Mount Speck second, My Mermaid third, then watching Engage. Punters who backed the favourite Fortune Venture in the first Young Bloods were just about to head to the bookies queue to collect when along came Anne Danette with a flying finish and a very impressive All performance. Now. You'll notice it in the lime green colours and white quick, back near the tail end of the field in the early stages. That's him number Anthony three. Keep an eye on him at the finish. Shortly after the start, Fortune Venture and Flying Emperor both going very quickly and they share the lead as they run onto the first bend. Hot August night going up fast into third place. Followed further back in the field then by Cublay and then Bold Prima, Dudley's Choice, Seahound on the inside of Life's A Jewel. A length and a half to Aqua Copper and then Susie's brother Just a Secret. Further back was Anne Danette and then Super Tack. Over on the rails, top over Toa Braggard, three lengths to Torvik, and then our lover and Mr. Zach last. Coming down the side, 700 metres left to go. Fortune Venture, the favourite, a half length in front of Flying Emperor. Hot August night, a length away third. Three lengths to Dudley's Choice, followed by Cublay. Aqua Copper picking up ground on the outside. Seahound hard ridden at this stage, and then Bold Prima, Just a Secret, and Annette. Around the home turn with about 4.50 to go, and the leader, Fortune Venture. He kicked away from them. He was almost two lengths in front now. He's getting out to the middle of the track, but he's nicely clear. Fortune Venture, Flying Emperor in second place, then Dudley's Choice. Aqua Copper down the outside and then Hot August Night and Seahound 200 metres left to go. Cookie's riding this favourite hands and heels at the moment. Fortune Venture about three lengths in front. Flying Emperor in second place then Dudley's Choice. Aqua Copper and Annette on the outside but Fortune Venture in front. Yes, he's handling the track okay. He's getting tied close to home. Oh, he's walking and Annette's flying. Fortune Venture in front and Annette's got up and beat him. And Annette flew. He really walked the last 50 metres that horse Fortune Venture and And Anita came from the clouds and beat him. And Annette first. I don't know who got the biggest shock, Gra shock Graham Cook on, and on uh, Fortune Venture or Wayne Wilson because 
That was uh, one of the most amazing finishes we've had at Eagle Farm for some time. The fourth was the second Young Bloods and it went to Gallant Royale, one of the mounts yeah, Gavin Duffy set. had to forfeit Racing and Gary Palmer out. proved a very able Dogs substitute. Got out quickly and long hot summer and Gallant Royale showing plenty of dash shortly after the start, so too principal asset. Aston Villa spearing through in the centre searching for the lead and there's Grand Claudius going very fast there, tightly packed as they run onto the first bend where the leader here, Grand Claudius, he's about four deep at just in front, Cerulean going up very quickly on the outside, just behind them Gallant Royale on the rails and Ben Gardy bitter and dancing treat in that forward bunch as well followed then by uh, getting back along the inside long hot summit narrowing star principal asset then Aston Villa Mr Kilpatrick getting a long way back sharp dream in company with Hallaru and down towards the rear of the field Ultra Martin and Port of France onto the home turn with about 450 meters to go and on the inside Gallant Royale getting a lovely run has gone through to take the lead now Gallant Royale about four horses off the fence just in front of Grand Claudius as they straighten up dancing treat Ben Gardy bitter to the outside long Long hot summer, he's sticking to the inside, he's getting a run up on the inside, but still three or four lengths off the leader, and that's Gallant Royale. 250 metres left to go, Gallant Royale kicked away from them, dancing treat in second place. Then Grand Claudius, long hot summer, Mr Kilpatrick, Port of France down the outside. 150 metres to go, Gallant Royale, two in front of dancing treat. Port of France, narrowing star, making up plenty of ground at the end. They're drawing to the post, Gallant Royale in front, narrowing star and dancing treat, trying hard to get to him, but as they hit the line, Gallant Royale is wanted by a long neck to narrowing star, dancing treat third. Then it was a good performance by Narong Star, who was making his debut yesterday, and he's one to follow. That was the first four from Eagle Farm. We'll be back after this break with races five to nine. There, who was always in command, and uh, down the running, he easily held off Swift Fox and Sir Pelinor. And set to go. Racing now, bold personality began fast near the inside, and Solo Affair actually got the best of it and raced straight to the lead. Sir Pelinor came out fast, going up towards the leader. Going quickly, Belesque in the early stages as well with Willingly. Baraki Jack getting back to midfield with Bush Soul. Swift Fox back third last with Gujarat and staying alive at the rear. On settling down, running to the first bend, just on a thousand to go. Solo Affair a length in front of Belesque, followed then by Willingly, who's three deep. Handsome Prince four deep, then Green. Grand Duo Bold Personality on the inside. A couple of lengths further back then to Gaelic, going up quickly on the outside, Cardi Star, Bush Soul on the rails, and then Swift Fox trying to pick up ground along the rails. Further back in the field, Blackie Jack, and then Allendale King Gujarat and staying alive. Running onto the home turn with about 450 metres to go. Belesque on the inside's a touch in front of Solo Affair. He's scouting very wide. He's about 10 deep, Solo Affair. Willingly the centre, then Grand Duo. Sir Palinor sticking to the inside, and he shot through to be just in front, Sir Palinor. With about 350 metres to go, Sir Palinor, he's going through the heavy ground on the inside but he's just in front Solo Affair tackling him again on the extreme outside it's Sir Pelinor and Solo Affair locked together with Solo Affair taking the lead Belesque in third place then Willingly and Swift Fox making up ground but Solo Affair in front of Sir Pelinor close to home Swift Fox is flying on the outside Solo Affair in front he's stopping Swift Fox coming at him no he can't get there and Solo Affair wins it by three quarters of a length Solo Affair first Swift Fox second third then Sir Pelinor followed by Cookie adopted similar tactics in the transition and he scored on Prize Pan, always deep on the track. Prize Pan looked as though he was going to be threatened by Spanish Road about the 200 metres, but Cook pulled the whip and uh, Prize Pan responded very valiantly to score All from set. Spanish Road and Lee now, San, who ran a bold race of big odds. Quickly, a little bit slow to get going, obliging Miss Spander and win a lot immediately drops to the rear. Spanish Road about fourth last. Record Joe's going fast on settling down and he's raced away at the 1200 to be almost two lengths in front of Prize Pan. Tells Legend a little bit deep at going up fast. Lee Sands is in a prime and uh, position in the early stages as well followed by Red Connors and then Bold Personality over on the inside next Obliging Miss and then Spanish Road Bold Chapel getting back with King Christian Lady Pagal Spander and win a lot last running onto the bend with a thousand metres left to go Record J steadied in front now leads by a length on Prize Pan who's scouting a bit wide going through in the centre Tells Legend and then Lee San a break of two lengths to Red Connors then Obliging Miss on the inside Spanish Road's going up fast on the outside now he's running up into about fifth place two lengths further back Illa Ford and then Bold Chapel King Christian Followed by Lady Pagal Spander and Winnerlot. Coming onto the home turn with about 450 metres left to go. Prize Pan out about eight horses deep has loomed up to tackle these leaders. Lee San in the centre over on the inside. Record Joe, he's starting to bog down in the heavy going. Tells Legend the centre and his Spanish road coming right through in the middle. He's finishing gamely. Further back, Red Connors with about 350 metres left to go. Record Joe the inside. Lee San, Prize Pan out wide. Spanish road in the centre. Tells Legend, then Red Connors. Record Joe's kicking again on the inside. 200 metres out. Record Joe just in front of Lee San, Prize Pan, Spanish Road on the extreme outside. Prize Pan, Spanish Road, I think they're just in front of Lee San and Record Joe. Here's a great gale. Prize Pan just in front, they're drawing to the line. Prize Pan in front as they hit it. Yes, he's just won at Prize Pan. Prize Pan first, second, Spanish Road, close for third. It's between Lee San and Record Joe, followed by Red. 
Forex Mile was next, and Sovereign Chief proved to me that the Eagle Farm 1600 metres is his pet distance. He was a distant last in the uh, middle stages. He sustained a long run around the outside, hit the Racing lead about 100 metres out. He was getting a little weary at the finish. Have it kicked back to make it uh, a fairly close finish, a half length of margin, but this is a classic Sovereign performance from Sovereign Chief. Back in the early stages with Garda Peak and Wee Dram. I'm settling down, running past the 1400, and Abbott's going up fast on the outside to tackle Bay Cavalier for the lead. Al Sierra quarter length away third, followed by Dashing Dancer pulling a little bit on the inside, and then Grey Khan, Mower and Beach Boy the centre, followed by Top Hat Joe. Wee Dram improved quickly up to about midfield. A couple of lengths then to Smiley Kyle, followed by Garda Peakway, Tuvu Girl, and then Ormiston. Anchor in a new ray of a long way back, and then Sovereign Chief and Aqua Lady running onto the bend at the thousand. Bay Cavalier the leader. He's a length and a half in front of our Sierra Quarter. Hit away third Abbott, who's about three or four deep at the moment. Grey Khan is out a little bit wide as well. Dashing Dancer running about fifth on the rails. Then Top Hat Joe Beach Boy Mower. A length further back to Wee Dram picking up ground. And then Ormiston on the outside of Waituvu Girl. Followed by Smiley Kyle, Garda Peak anchor in. Further back, Aqua Lady going forward on the outside of Nureyev and Sovereign Chief last. As they come down the side, 600 metres left to go. Abbott about seven deep. He's the leader just in front of Grey Khan, who's raced through to join him quickly. Bay Cavalier third over on the inside. Our Sierra Court and Mower just behind them. We Dram's coming into it with a good run. Dashing Dancer. He's going to take the shortcuts. He's over there on the inside. As they straighten up and they fan right across the track. Dashing Dancer with the advantage of the inside shot through to be the leader. It's Dashing Dancer a length in front of Grey Khan. We Dram coming home gamely on the extreme outside Abbott. And now Sovereign Chief and Anchor in both winding up. 250 to go. Dashing Dancer the leader. Abbott on the outside. Anchor in. Sovereign Chief coming hard. Abbott in front. Dashing Dancer kicking again. Sovereign Chief right down the outside. He's swapping him close to home. He's loomed up to take the lead. Sovereign Chief, today's his day. And Sovereign Chief could have to beat Abbott Anchor in third. Dashing Dancer fourth. Then Smarter Kyle Weed couldn't quite follow the reasoning of some jockeys to persist with the inside running when the winners were coming wide all day. But uh, well, perhaps they might have known more than we did. The Trevor Henderson novice was next and Sac Revere gave Graham the Cook a winning treble. She's another to scout Richard wide and uh, deserved this win. quickly, Sac Revere showing speed shortly after the jump. Robbie's sister and Darzon drifting back in the early stages. Wave me goodbye back about fourth last and economy last goes to the rear. They're tightly packed running onto the first bend with 850 metres left to go. Sac Revere's loomed up on the outside to hit the lead. Sac Revere just in front of unswerving over on the inside. Roman Knight then wraps Hale Special followed by Downey. Further back in the field then picking up ground quickly, wave me goodbye, going right through on the centre. Rick Shale next on the inside, and then Estelina Rymos is a long way back. Dars on back, second last with Robbie's sister, and Economy Lass is at the rear. 600 metres left to go, unswerving just in front of Sac Revere. Raps is uh, coming around the outside of those two. Raymond Knight sticking to the inside, followed then by Downey. Wave me goodbye, coming through about six or seven horses off the rails as they turn for home. 400 metres left to go, and on the extreme outside, unswerving and Sac Revere. They appear to be the two leaders. Raps is battling on fairly well. Good me, uh, wave me goodbye, closer to the inside. Darzon getting up along the rails and Hale Special coming into it with Estelina. Sac Revere the outside just in front of Unswerving. Raps Estelina, Hale Special all running on gamely and then Darzon. Sac Revere on the outside's just in front. Yes, too good for them, close to home. And Sac Revere's getting away from Unswerving to win it by a length and a half. Sac Revere first, Unswerving second, Hale Special third, then Estelina. Apprentice John Walk continued his uh, recent run of success and landed a good plunge too on Methodical in the final event, the Knightsbridge Novice. Backed in from 10 to 1 to 7 to, to 1, Methodical just wore down Prime Walk in now. a good battle Star over the final 200 metres. Star Armin ran another honest race for third. On, came out fast and so too did Little Mimi. Grey Meteor can't go the speed. He's drifting back. And at the rear of the field, Latin Myth. Now on settling down, running past the 1400, Astro Cobbler the leader. He's a half length in front of Dom and going up quickly on the outside. Prime Walk running to the lead now. Mumbo Jumbo and Methodical up nice and handy. Little Mimi just behind them, followed by Space Invader Jolly Good Fun, quarter share. Getting a fair way back, Wonkers. He's a little wide, Count and Gold, and then Lady Jogger, Baby King next on the inside, followed by Star Armand, and then Airbound, Grey to Grace, Panda Gold on the outside. Further back in the field was Lehman. He's getting back to second last Lehman with Latin Myth and Great Meteor at the rear. Running onto the bend at the 8.50, and Prime Walk loomed up quickly on the outside to go to the lead by three quarters of a length on Methodical. Mumbo Jumbo Wonkers next, followed by Astro Cobbler, and then Space Invader. Dom picking up ground, going around them quickly, count in gold. Lady Jog is starting to go forward. Airbound next and then Star Armour. Star Armour's right off the track but starting a big run now. Further back, Little Mimi, Baby King. Then quarter share, Latin Myth, Pan Gold, Grey to Grace. Lehman's a long way back with Jolly Good Fun and Grey Meteor still last. They've packed up very tight as they run around the corner. Oh, there's trouble on the turn. I think it's Airbound came down. One's down on the corner. I think it's Airbound as they straighten up now. Prime Walk's just in front, tackled by Methodical. Right down the outside, Lady Jogger, Star Armour coming 
coming into it, and then count in goal space invader and mumbo jumbo. 250 metres left to go. Prime walk just in front of Methodical. Count in gold on the outside with Star Armin, followed by Lady Jogger, and then Walkers. Prime walk just in front. Methodical's kicking again on the inside. Star Armin, count in gold, trying hard to get to them. Prime walk just in front. Methodical's coming again on the inside. Methodical and Prime walk, they hit the line, locked together. Very close between Methodical and Prime walk. Star Armin third, followed in then by Lady. As you saw, apprentice George Michaels had a, a rather heavy tumble from airbound. Uh, fortunately, he seemed to escape serious injury, and we hope he makes a, a speedy recovery. That was the action from Eagle Farm yesterday, the double and treble information. Firstly, the double of uh, seven and nine, sorry, 2 and 11 paid $44.40 on races 7 and 9, and the treble on races 5, 7 and 9, the winning numbers there, 5, 2 and 11, paid $139. Shine and a reasonably good surface for the Rose Hill meeting. The first was the Variety Club Handicap and Power Symbol, ridden by John Marshall, starts the favourite, gets a split in the centre about the 200 metres to score well from the Tommy Smith trained walking home. The 420, Cindy's Peel hanging. The rider had a peep over the right shoulder. It's a half heroic star, a length the walking home Dallas King. And then Old Chan followed by Power Symbol and Deleng thread the boards in cool shape. 2.20 left to go. And Cindy's Peel again being attacked by plenty of horses. Power Symbol getting the split to come home gamely. And Power Symbol race to Cindy's Peel. Walking home is plugging on too. But Power Symbol's now gained a break of a length is drawing clear. And Power Symbol on the line a length exactly walking home. Tread the board. The McWilliams Wines handicap was the second. Mick Dippman making an immediate impact on Sydney Racing. He scores here on Zephyr Cool, wide at the home turn, but responds to hard riding from Dippman. That's him in the black and lime out uh, near the outside. Bourbon Boy nearly two lengths, Black Brigand. Pagma Mahal trying to get out, followed two back by Zephyr Cool Musen, and then Santuza at the 220 as the rider goes for the whip now on Bourbon Boy. It's a length in front from Black Brigand Musen. Zephyr Cool running on, and so too is Ron's Pride. Pagma Mahal can't get out, Bourbon Boy. Tackled by Zephyr Cool, who looks to be doing better, is and Zephyr Cool coming away. Musen will get second. The far up handicap was the third first of a winning double to trainer Ray Guy when Tulsa Knight, starting at nine to one, easy in the market, and scores well from Fairy Tulsa Toast and uh, Romantic, Romantic Kingdom. Something very wide out, and kaluni has got two behind him at the 300 past the ledger. Fairy Toast level with Romantic Kingdom. Tulsa Knight is starting to run home stylishly on the outside from Sovereign Shoe under pressure. Then go Rebel and Kalini, followed by Gay Con, but Tulsa Knight drawn to the lead now, and Tulsa Knight is racing away. The bookies took a real set against him, but he's going to blitz his rivals. Fairy Toast second, Romantic Kingdom third. The Oak Bridge Handicap Race 4, an impulsor now at the Brian Smith Stable at Wyong did best in a great finish to score from Bourne Red and Mick Dittman's Mount Holborn Court. Sir Clip, a length away in third position, Pharaoh's Dream. Now Seeker's Gold has become cluttered away. LGF is battling on, he's desperate on Seeker's Gold to get a run. There's nothing there and Bourne Red kicking at the 200. Now Seeker's Gold is out but the stable mate running on Holborn Court. Here's Impulsor and Shamrock King. Anything can win a hundred to go. Impulsor, Bourne Red, Holborn Court impulses going home a little bit better impulsor we've been saying in recent weeks how well young Craig Hieronymus is riding and this is a very good performance here on young blood slices between runners about the 200 meters and draws away to score very easily and young blood going great guns at the moment for the Brian Mayfield Smith stable study into the stretch and regal carry oil length and a half on sabre dancer the stable mate a length splendid victory flashed old push wide and two lengths to young blood coming past the ledger and regal carry oil is being taken on by young blood finishing determinedly with sabre dancer battling on and then flash doll but young blood cruised away he's looking good at the 100 young blood two and a half sabre dancer followed by flash doll like a planet and regal carry oil but young blood is toying with his rivals Young blood on the line. The Sterling handicap and Osrada the Grey kicks clear after they straighten. Noel Smith keeps him going to score well from smile and wave and quiet word. To Regal Porsche on the bend at the 450 and Osrada and quiet word stride for stride. Three deep as Somerset smile and behind them smile and wave looking for the run. At length into Frau Lamont followed by Risley and then Broke Heights and excuse me please. Again the grey Osrada dashes to the lead. At the distance 200 to go and Smith pulls the whip on Osrada. It kicks two quiet words. Smile and wave getting out now followed by Frau Lamont and nothing else a chance. But Osrada's in no danger of defeat and kept going by Noel. Smith Osrada wins at a length and a half on the line.
Northern Blossom won the uh, Sweeps handicap, 1,400 metres, uh, takes the lead below the 200 metres and uh, draws away to defeat Ribbons, who battles on strongly for second and might be one to follow. Quarters of a length clear on Swift interest, the leader hanging. A length away, third, Sir Rocco Miss. Northern Blossom with a mile of room to come through and then comes Ribbons and Happy Halloween at the 250 and Swift interest in front. Oh, as time goes by, ran right out off the track and created a chain reaction on its outside. Northern Blossom bursting right through has hit the lead now. French finale moves moving up to be second, followed by Ribbon Swift interest and then different class. But it's Northern Blossom in front. They're coming at it, but Northern Blossom holding on and will win. It was Mick Dittman again to the fore in the final event. Great ride here. Slices through on the inside at the home turn on Walisa and holds off Lightning Bell, who runs on very strongly for second. Uh, Dittman certainly struck form quickly in Sydney. Walisa's getting a beautiful run as high as he's left the fence and Walisa strode through to hit the lead. And at the 350, it's Walisa at a length and a half clear after my career second. Scorpio third, then Cascopedia's Secret Ways. And Scotch Hayes is next. Dittman riding hard on the favourite Walisa. She's two lengths on Scorpio, hanging off the track. Lightning Bell getting clear now, but it's Walisa in front past the 100. Walisa at a length on Lightning Bell finishing quickly, but Walisa hanging on. She's going to win it. And Walisa scores by a long neck to Lightning Bell. Now the uh, double and treble information from Rose Hill. Firstly, the double numbers, 3 and 13, paid $57.50. And the treble on races 4, 5 and 7, the lucky numbers, 8, 3 and 13, paid $300. But the first was the hurdle and Norfolk Tiger, 6 to 4, Norfolk always Tiger in command. He kicked clear before the turn and held, uh, held off uh, Express by pretty by easily, Express Tiger. Missed and further back, Eagles, Nest, Tilburg and Lord Tyrone. But this has got it well won, the first favourite, as they come to the turn, 300 out. And Norfolk Tigers, five lengths to Express Age, eight lengths away, bye-bye, Diamond. Fairway missed, might have, he's broken down. Here's the last, now they're into the straight and taken away from the fence. Norfolk Tigers, six in front. He draws to the last, takes off and over it beautifully. Six lengths to Express Age and then bye-bye, Diamond. And the first favourite, Norfolk Tiger, canters home, wins by nearly eight lengths to Express Age. Six lengths away, third, bye-bye, Diamond. 20 Heavy rain fell during the running of the second event. The floor shine shoe shop handicap, and it goes to Mum's Pride at ten to one. Defeated the heavily backed sleeping gi sleeping giant, giant backed in from seven to two to five to two. Mum's Pride starting to run on well. Man's Mar won't run in the first six, and on the corner, sleeping giant in front with Mum's Pride, the big danger, and coming home like a train. They've kicked clear of Fearless Toast, and then Triton Sun, Sorrento Girl, Hot Sun into the straight. Mum's Pride's quickly dashed to the lead, and she's racing right away. Mum's Pride well clear of sleeping giant, and a long up the fearless host and just a boy coming home pretty well but mum's pride goes on to score easily about a length and a half sleeping giant eight lengths away third fearless host followed then by just a boy pretty murky at that stage at mooney valley the steeple went to learmont lad a favorite great jumper and he scores well from lord china five away karina missed airmont dropping out from sink for supper 300 to go on the turn one to jump learmont lad by two lengths going like a winner lord china seconds battling on well though Five to Karina missed and then Airmon into the straight, 150 to go and fairway missed, ran off, uh, ran off the track, uh, Lord Shiner. Learmont led two and a half in front. Here's the last, he draws to it, two and a half clear. Oh, mighty leap, he's home. Learmont lad's going to win the Hiskins, a brilliant exhibition of jumping. Three lengths, I'd say, maybe four to Lord Shiner. Gold Consoles won the, uh, the next event. Uh, Darren Gauchi rarely scores at long odds these days, but 33 to 1, Gold Consoles defeated Carly. And a half now to Greystroke moving up to be third on the inside. Stainross is gone. Then powerful goal. Kale's got the upper hand. Truly Vane's gone. Greystroke moving into second placing. Uh, they're clear from powerful goal and then Gold Consoles into the straight, however, and Kale kicked away two lengths to Greystroke and going strongly from Gold Consoles coming hard down the outside. Kale clear. Gold Consoles starting to fly down the outside is coming all over the top of it and uh, it's goal and coming right down the outside goal consoles is going to get up and win goal console scores there's another gold for Gauchi in the next event when Gold Fiore looked beaten coming to the home turn. Gauchi pulls the whip and drives Gold Fiore onto to uh, beat off Ruling Blood and then hold off Whiskey Lover out. and Bogan Lord. Round the outside, Bogan Lord, two to Safras, forget the others. Ruling Blood clear. 300 out on the corner. Three parts to Gold Fiore who won't give in and is almost drawn level again. Two further back, Bogan Lord and Whiskey Lover and Gold Fiore drew level with Ruling Blood who might have run his race. Gold Fiore took the lead now from Ruling Blood but here's Bogan Lord down the outside. He's finishing very fast with Whiskey Lover, but Golfiori in front near the line, and Golfiori's going to hang on and win. Whiskey Lover second, a beaten about a halfling. No, nearly a dead heat second.
Certainly is a great prospect, young Gauchi. And here's another top apprentice, Michael Clark, who scores on Fearless Charm. They're all getting pretty weary at the end of this race, but Fearless Charm easily holds off Marmalada, who then makes up ground along the, the inside without threatening. By Marmalada, and uh, behind those horses then at the head of the others came awarded. On the turn, Gambler's Mate stopping quickly. Coming around the outside is Fearless Charm, starting to wear it down from so-called a lady. Gambler's Mate led about two lengths into the straight, however, from uh, on the outside, Fearless Charm, who's getting to it quickly now from Marmalada who's running on fairly well. Fearless Charm got to the lead with 100 to go and it's starting to come away. Marmalada's running on well on the inside but Fearless Charm will win the tightest lot of horses I've ever seen in my life. Wins at about a half length. Uh, second place. Pretty tight in the next two. The Julius Marlowe handicap over 2,600 metres and Morning Fury starting at 5 to 1. Easy in the market from 3 to 1. Scores from Caddy the Kid and Cut Price who makes Conch up big ground late in the race. On, on the outside making ground well then Rocky Affair and my test. 300 to go. Morning Fury clear. Two lengths to Conchell on the outside, but it's under the whip, Conchell. It might, might catch it. Then Caddy the Kid, and further back in the field, then at the head of the others, uh, would be Rocky Affair. Morning Fury in front. He's starting to stop, but still a length and a half in front. He's holding them. Uh, Conchell trying hard on the outside with Caddy the Kid, but Morning Fury leads, all, leads uh, to the line. It'll win about a length and a half to Caddy the Kid. Another one a little easy in the market was Saatchi in the final event. Uh, another to ease from 3 to 1 to 5 to 1, but he revelled in the going. Powers away in the straight to score very handsomely from Winsock, who makes up big ground. He might be one to follow. The field, then by Leroy Salil dropping out of it. Winsock around the outside. Cindy's Harbour's gone. On the turn, and Saatchi kick clear of Pikes Lane and Blazing Surrett from Happy Road, and then Winsock, Cindy's Harbour. But Saatchi revelling in the going. Four lengths in front of Pikes Lane into the straight. Then Happy Road, Blazing Surrett, and Winsock, but a big win to Saatchi. It's about five in front halfway down the straight coming home hard Winsock will get up and run second but Saatchi wins by six lengths Winsock second third Pikes Lane well, that was it from Mooney Valley, getting pretty murky again at the finish there yesterday. Now the double and treble information. Firstly, the double numbers, 6 and 10, paid $19.15. The treble was on races 4, 5 and 7, and the numbers were 12, 6 and 10, and the treble dividend, $1,165. We're finally getting towards the big meetings in Sydney, the San Domenico Stakes yesterday. The first was the uh, Romanda handicap, over 2,400 metres. Wim away, the second favourite, was desperately ridden a long way from home. He gets up to score, holding off Mr Flinders to the home corner and Bourbon Boy fighting on strongly. Leads a length and a half hour year dropping the bit. Fleeting light on the inside hanging on. Caliph has become pocketed followed two back by Wimaway taken to the outside. Entering the straight down at the 250 Bourbon Boy just in front of Fleeting light on the inside. A length and a half to Wimaway battling on followed by Misty Azar and Caliph. Here are horses galore with Wimaway cruising up now to hit the lead from Bourbon Boy and Fleeting light. Mr Flinders running on but Wimaway is going to get the money. In recent weeks, I've been most impressed with the riding performances of Sydney apprentice Craig Hieronymus. He scores here on Cindy's Peel, who's second to the home turn, shoots clear about the 150 metres and holds off Butterfly Prince and Chardona. Queensland are definitely right. Chardona, three or four Cindy's Peel, a link Butterfly Prince and then Flintstone got hooked to the outside and Belitis next. Straightening up and Chardona, three Cindy's Peel, then Butterfly Prince, a link Flintstone and two further back, definitely right under the whip, coming past the 200 and Chardona the leader, a length and a half on Cindy's Peel setting out after it at the 100 Cindy's Peel bridging the gap on Chardonna hits the front and the Riverina horse running away Cindy's Peel Butterfly Prince will get second the favourite Shamrock King looked to be in some trouble just after straightening but hooked across the leader's heels he goes on to score well in the in the welter handicap from Zephyr Cool who was uh, well ridden by Ron Quinton Chip a length away third is Kutzbar followed by Zephyr Cool momentarily held up as is Musen Shamrock King can't get a crack at them at the moment and Banks will have to go right to the outs straightening up Cargo again joined by Lord Chip Zephyr Cool tackling the pair of them Musen can't get out here's Shamrock King pulling four and five wide now Zephyr Cool's taken the lead Shamrock King's after him quickly Zephyr Cool and Shamrock King Shamrock King draws level puts the body in front now and Shamrock King comes away to beat Zephyr Cool by a there was tremendous interest in the return to racing of the crack, uh, last season's crack two-year-old Sir Dapper. He didn't let his supporters down, heavily backed to start odds on favourite. Always uh, in the box seat and goes on to score 
most impressively from Bean there, who battled on strongly. Followed by Prime Asset and last of all, it's Bay on the swing, 400 to go, and Purpose is rather spearing right off the track. Here is Sculptor, and the leader is Vain Carrioy, but Sadapa eased off the fence to come after Vain Carrioy quickly. About two lengths to Bean there, Purpose and Yoyan Gamble running a good race on the inside. Vain Carrioy joined and headed by Sadapa, and Quentin has a quick peep on the favourite. Sadapa accelerating now. He's home, Sadapa. Two lengths been there. Yoyan Gamble and Vain Carrioy battle out third, but Sadapa a brilliant win. At this early stage, Sir Dapper is looming as uh, one of the stars of the spring. He's going to be very hard to beat in the big three-year-old races. The fifth event was the uh, gold plate welder and noble connection starting at five to one. Gets the money here from Trench Digger who battles on well. 400, about a half length clear on Noble Connection, followed by Chief Justice, high eye on the outside, a length and a half to Trench Digger, two fashion, play Kuala Bay and Sir Charlotte Town from Bellini, entering the straight now, half length on Chief Justice, mentions Lane, Trench Digger getting out, followed by high eye, but it's Noble Connection coming to the 100 metres, nicely clear, Noble Connection going great guns in no danger, a length and a half, Trench Digger and mentions Lane, then high eye and fashion play, but Noble Connection... Short price favourite uh, Secret Romance had no trouble scoring in the Tommy Woodcock, Woodcock handicap starting at 6-4. to four. Scores well from Colours and High Classic. Last being Domino and a length the stars on. Travelling to the bend and Colours leads out still by three quarters of a length. Secret Romance second about to be wound up by Jeffries. A length third on the outside. Calm Joe followed by Charming Cavalier. He's had to go for the whip on the favourite Secret Romance. It's coming at Colours. Calm Joe battling on well on the outside. Secret Romance the leader. Oh, Calm Joe. Joe has ducked in badly, almost knocked Charming Cavalier out of the race. Secret Romance in front, Colours battling on but can't hold the favourite. Second home Colours. As Ian Craig mentioned, Calm Joe did duck in badly. It would have been interesting. I think he uh, could have pressured uh, Secret Romance in the finish there, so he might want be one to keep an eye on. The seventh was the Caliente Handicap and Smokey Dale, widely drawn, spears to the lead in the early part, shoots clear after straightening and holds off a late burst from Prince Monday. New Teela, Dream and Vain Toxo, then star of Kingston, Loy Yang, followed by Duke Corio and Slayo, advert to the outside, then Prospectors, Flying Cinders and Two Sovereign Shoe from Sky Skipper and Lone Eagle. Entering the straight and Smokey Dale, the leader, Prince Mundo second, a length away, third is Swift Zephyr, who's under the whip, and then New Teela, Followed by Dream and Vane and Star of Kingston at the 150. And Smokey Dale is just leading Prince Mundo, having a real crack at it now. Smokey Dale and Prince Mundo. Smokey Dale just in front of Prince Mundo, doing better, Smokey Dale. And Smokey Dale's one at about a neck to Prince Mundo. The Rajah handicap was the final event from Warwick Farm. Now have a good look at the finish here. Lord Paddington looks to score, but Julius Lord in a deceptive Paddington go makes it a dead heat. And uh, Embulum third. The quarter then to Julius and Bold Bell and two further back. Zaza Zoom, Snake Eyes. Followed then by Golden Award and a good margin to close company as they travel towards the home corner at the 300. And Step in Style and Street Music going together a length and a half. Lord Paddington locked away at the moment. Parnassus keeping it in, followed by Julius, but now Lord Paddington's getting out. Zaza Zoom gets a split and Julius is really warming up now coming to the 200 and Julius has taken the lead Lord Paddington endeavoring to match it he's coming quickly Lord Paddington Zaza's in the rail Lord Paddington might be going better than Julius yes is Lord Paddington wins the last Lord Paddington from Julius in a tight finish you couldn't blame Ian Craig there. It did look like Lord Paddington, but it finished up a dead heat between he and Julius. Now the double and treble information from Warwick Farm. Firstly, the double, 7 eight, and 8, paid $58.20. The treble numbers there, the favourite one, Sir Dapper, 7 and 8, paid $89.15. Those were the highlights of the... Before the